Rock All by Ben Emlyn Jones For Louisa And for Geraldine as promised, thanks for believing in me. With apologies to Commander Richard Cornell, R.N. As above, so below. So we can never understand the divine substance because it is infinite and divorced from its effects. A mirror image, a platonic shadow, an enigma. Giordano Bruno, 1548-1600 to 1600. A wise man knows how much something is worth. Only a fool knows how much it costs. Confucius, 500 B.C. Jesus, peace be upon him, said this. The world is a bridge. Cross it, but build no house on it. Life endures for just a moment. Spend it in devotion. The rest is unseen. Perhaps this way, the door whose key has been lost may again be opened. Akbar the Great, Emperor of India, 1572 A.D. Chapter 1 It's just a name on a shipping forecast. Christopher Columbus, eat your heart out, said Zachary Neelam. He turned from the mirror and scrutinized his packed bags, everything he would need for at least the next six months. Then he looked out of the little top floor window. A thick, steamy drizzle fell onto the dark rooftops of Oban. Archaic TV aerials bristled above the chimney pots. He washed and shaved carefully in the tiny adjoined bathroom. Then he brushed his hair and dressed in warm clothes for the sea. Well, here goes. He picked up his luggage, squared his shoulders, and opened the bedroom door. He joined Trevor in the dining room for breakfast and sat opposite him at the table. Trevor never spoke as he ate sitting bolt upright, meticulously dissecting his bacon and eggs, peeling the burned skin off his sausage, and cutting his fried bread into four equal quarters. At 8.30, they left the B&B and walked side by side down the streets to the harbor. They passed children on their way to school, a milk float, a fisherman on his bike, and many others going about their daily business. None of them gave either of the men a second glance. Don't any of these people know who we are? No. Why should they, Zack? replied Trevor. The ship was called the HMS Kenneth McAlpine, an ancient converted freighter painted battleship gray and commissioned as a Royal Navy Auxiliary. She was tied up along the Mulbarra Ferry, rainwater dripping from her rusty scuppers. A loose cluster of about a dozen people had gathered to watch her departure, including a journalist and a photographer from the local newspaper. The latter was busy taking shots of the scene. "'Bloody hell!' said Zack. Is this all we've got? What do you want, Zack? A brass band and streamers? Well, a few more reporters and a TV crew would have done. Never mind. Our time will come. As they walked onto the crumbling concrete quay, Ross Quentin came over to meet them. The Rockall Commission director was clad in a black raincoat and was sheltered by an umbrella to match. Morning, boys. How are you feeling? Fine. Everything ready? asked Trevor. Yep. 
the ship singled up and all crew aboard. We're just waiting on a few new ones. Damn, how could they be late today of all days? My fault, Trev, not theirs. I only confirmed their appointment yesterday evening. They've had to rush up here overnight. Well, this is it, lads. The moment we've all been waiting for. Six years of hard work, and now it's payday. It's a shame you can't come with us, Ross, said Zack. The big man gave a deep chuckle. Isn't it just? I wish I was. But some mug has to stay behind and piss about with red tape. I'll be waiting for your radio message, and when I get it, I'll send it on to the Prime Minister, and he'll make an announcement to the Commons. Probably just a brief mention, growled Zack, a footnote before his question time. He was about to add more when a journalist butted in. Excuse me, mate. Got a few words for the Argyle reporter. Yeah, uh, sure, Zack began. I'll handle this. Trevor stepped obtrusively between them. Basically, this is a voyage of discovery. We're departing these familiar shores for a mysterious land where no man has ever set foot. It's pretty exciting, really. Zack glared at the back of Trevor's head. The reporter scribbled into a notebook. So how do you compare this expedition to the great historical explorers, people like Captain Cook? Yes, indeed. I think it's an opportunity to revive the romance and the spirit of adventure that these men inspired. Yuck, muttered Zack under his breath. Can you can you tell me more about this island of Rockall? asked the journalist. Rockall is a small, very remote island that lies about 300 miles in that direction. Trevor pointed with his hand. It's only around five miles square. Not much more is known about it because it's never been landed on or even overflown. It was officially annexed by the UK in September 1955 as part of the Outer Hebrides missile range. But that annexation is not valid under the current international law because no landing was ever made. Why, why do you think that this island has never been explored before? I mean, after all, it's not that far away compared to some places. Trevor chuckled. I know. It seems absurd, doesn't it? We're a nation of explorers, colonists. We've traveled the oceans of the earth, reached the South Pole, penetrated the deepest, darkest jungles of Africa. But in all that time, we've overlooked this enigma on our doorstep. I think it's basically because Rock Hall is so small and remote that no one expects to find anything there of interest or profit. The great pioneers and conquerors just stepped over it on their way to richer, more exotic climes. Besides which, the land itself is physically inaccessible. A plateau surrounded by 700-foot cliffs. Do you think you'll find anything there of interest or profit? Trevor held up his hands. Who knows? But you've been working on this project since 2004. You've invested eight million pounds. Why? Rockall represents a hole in our history. A small hole, but it needs to be plugged. Thank you, Mr. McCain. Trevor nodded, and the journalist moved off. Zack plucked his elbow. Why did you do that, Trevor? Do what? Cut across me like that. I was about to talk to that bloke, and you pushed me out of the way. I meant no offense, Zack. I'm simply better at PR than you. 
In future, stick to the walking and let me do the talking, okay? He picked up his suitcase and mounted the gangway. He turned, smiled, and waved regally. A camera bulb flashed. Resentment burned inside Zack's forehead. The rest of the Rock All Twenty made their way to the ship, lugging their gear with them. Biologists, geologists, engineers, a nurse, everyone that the mission would need to sound out the unknown island. They were to be Zack's sole company for at least the next few months. He watched them grimly. Broadway and Jenny were already bickering over something. Ross Quentin came on board to bid them farewell. He stood on the quarterdeck with his hands in his pockets, removing one occasionally to look at his watch. Where are they? he seethed. They should have got here by now. Smoke began puffing from the ship's single funnel, and dockers stood by to cast off the lines. Do you mean the new boys? asked Trevor. Only one boy. The other's a girl. Kaylee Ford. She used to work for the Highland Development Section of a Glasgow-based company. And the boy? Dill Gibson. Dropped out of a shrink degree. Dill? I know. Poor lad must have been ripped to shreds at school. He's going to be your counselor. Counselor? said Zack. Why the hell do we need a counselor? It's standard practice these days, you know. Emotional support, problem sharer, shoulder to cry on, whatever. What are we, a woman's refuge? Zack, you're about to spend months away from your home on a tiny windswept rock hundreds of miles from anywhere with a bunch of stressed out people with no privacy. Ah, here they are at last. A taxi sped into the harbor and skidded on a little wet concrete of the quay as it pulled up alongside the gangplank. Two people got out and hastily retrieved their luggage from the boot. The doors closed with a chop and the taxi drove off. The newcomers climbed up the gangplank to where the three men were waiting. Hi, said Quentin. Glad you made it. Sorry we're late, said Kaylee Ford. A short, dumpy, young Glaswegian woman with wavy hair. I had to fly up last night from London, said Dill Gibson, a hefty, dark-eyed man of similar age. No problem, replied Quentin, and introduced them genially to Trevor and Zack. One of the sailors approached them. Captain's compliments, sir. We're ready to set sail. Of course, said Quentin, as if suddenly reminded of something. He shook their hands. Well, here you go, folks. Rock all awaits. God, I wish I was coming with you. He stepped onto the gangplank. Bon voyage! As soon as he was back ashore, the gangplank was taken in, and the ship's lines cast off. The white ensign burst free at the masthead like a gull released from a cage, and the whistle sounded, a deep clashing tone that echoed around Oban Bay. The deck trembled, and the water churned brown as the ship pulled away from the wharf. The voyage of discovery had begun. End of Part 1 Chapter 1 Rock All By Ben Emlyn Jones Read by Gareth Davis A Mindset Central Audio Book